Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this episode of uh, the Beat by Donnie B. Got the beats, man. You already know what time it is when I got when I got folks on here, man. Today I got a living legend, man, and you know I got to start with that glorious intro. So, I can't even. That explain. sound like you ushering me into a holy place or something like. Hey, man. <laughs> That's what you do when you when you're talking to a living legend right here, man. So, listen, well, I got the pleasure of having one of the one of the the, the pioneers of the hip hop community, the hip hop, just everything that is hip hop. One of the one of the, the living legends that we have, man. And I am so elated. I am so happy because everybody knows Donnie B got the beats. Love the love the beat. Love the boom back, bro. So without further ado, we're gonna get straight to this. I got I got celebrity recording artists. MC Shan, pioneer of the hip hop gang. What's going on with you, brother? How you doing? I'm chilling on the dipping the children because they're going to make this difficult for my life. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. How you living, See, brother? It's, somebody it's, it's, just it's, had to call while I'm doing this. It always happens, man. Because, man, you can't Now you can, I can't hear you. Okay. Hang on a second. Check. Te test it. Every test single it. time somebody calls when I'm doing my thing. And no worries. These things happen. If you got, can you hear me? If you got to disconnect, you can disconnect and reconnect. No, it only happens to me. <laughs> See, now I got to do this. Hello? Yep. Check. Check. Man, disconnect. Sucks, yo. Disconnect. Call back in. Disconnect. They need a Call do me. not disturb on there. <laughs> These things happen, brother. No worries. Oh, trying it again. There you go. Dang, man. Disconnect. Dis 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 Call back in. I'm coming. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, but as you know, th these things happen. So don't worry about it. He'll be right back in. Uh, still a pleasure to have this gentleman on. And guess what? Right back I in. I hear you now. No, man. Right back with it. Again, don't worry. These things happen, man. This is the uh, age of communication. You know what I mean? So, uh, so anyway, right. we got MC Shan in the building. What's going on with your brother? I woke up this morning. Everything is just fine. I don't have a complaint in the world. Not one. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Listen, we we gonna get some, for, let's let's take this back. Let's take this back because you know a, a lot of people that that know me know who you are, but there's a lot of people that don't know me that don't know who you are. So for those that don't know who MC Shan is, could you enlighten us? Could you share with the, the viewers who is MC Shan? Just your normal, average, regular, everyday person that just does what I feel like doing. And I mean, I started out in the music game. The music game for old school cats like myself nowadays is not a very lucrative endeavor. So I found other things to put my time into instead of trying to rekindle something that I know. People of my age, they watch blogs like this and whatnot, but they ain't putting their money on no dag on Spotify and things like this. So making music at my age and think I'm going to get the streams that some of these young people that just be on their phone all they get is like a disillusion. So I just quit. Right. Period. I'm not doing music anymore. But MC Shan, I started back in the days. I'm from the projects that... Same Nas and Mob Deep. I'm the one put it on the map so people get that straight. I'm the QB general. 
<laughs> you love to hear the story again and again, every time. <laughs> I hate <laughs> listen. And you could Google me, and my and my Instagram is MC Sham with a number one. I've been slacking on my Instagram lately because I just been see. I used to be slow. But now I'm slow. I'm enjoying life a little more. Instead of things passing by the window like this and I ain't enjoying it. Right. I'd have slowed down so much that it's like, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, man. Like you said, being that you you know you the QB general, man, what was it like for you coming up in this, you know, uh, you know, back in the day? What, what was it like? And you know, what hurdles did you overcome to become the success that you are today, man? Just regular living in the projects. Just the way I've reached my success, however I've reached it, it wasn't just through hip hop. I've produced music, I've done other things, but coming from where I come from, everybody like yourself. Everybody didn't grow up with a silver spoon, so I feel blessed. And the message that I like to put out to people is that all the time you want to put your blame on somebody else that you can't get to hear, oh, it's because I don't like man. Ain't nobody stopping you but you. You are your worst enemy. Oh, my God. My kids are my worst enemy right now. <laughs> he wants to say one time for your mind, two time for your soul. Oh, yeah. Let's get him. Hey. 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 What's say one up? time for your mind, two time for your soul. Do I All right. <laughs> no, that's not my grandkid. That's my son. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> So yeah, man, that, that, that's that's awesome and that's great insight, man. Because a lot of people don't understand that they like to sit back and and like you said, blame everybody else and point fingers everywhere else other than where they need to be. You know what I mean? Right. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that negative wisdom. Now, how did you? How exactly did everything come together? And and how did you get started in the music industry? Well, it was a fluke. Okay. We used to just rhyme on the benches, me, Shantae, and us in the bridge. We used to just be on the checker tables rhyming. All of a sudden, out the blue, one day, Shantae gets a record deal. Roxanne, Roxanne, ah! Roxanne you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So what I did was I went and I wrote a song called Molly Scratch. Shantae took me on tour with her. She was the biggest thing in the whole hip hop at that point. And so getting into the game wasn't like the other people where you had to send in demos and hope they'd listen. I just went to Molly and said, all of his beats and my rhymes attached. Made a record just about him, and I was on from there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Did you, did, and, and, and sorry, because you mentioned it, and, but it was a big deal, the, the the Roxanne Roxanne movie. Did you? How did you feel about that movie? And, you know, be, be, be honey, be, keep it above. Uh, listen, Chris wasn't as big a drug dealer as Shantae made him seem out to be like people were scared of him. Chris mm. was actually a cool, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't know what he did, he wasn't that toughy, push you around type dude. Mm. Whatever they did to make the script a little bit more juice, entertaining yeah. or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's what they did. But Chris wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Chris wasn't like that. Okay. But you know, for entertainment purposes, they always have to add a little bit of spice to the life. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So speaking of, let's 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 you know, because again, I'm I'm very familiar with your story. Like I said, I'm I, I grew up in D.C., so you know, what I'm saying, and all my family from the tri-state, so it is what it is. You know what I mean? I want to ask. I'm gonna ask you this real question. Real question. What? Let's talk about the Juice Crew. Did you tell the people what the Juice Crew was and what what, what the Juice Crew was about? The Juice Crew, that was a collective band of MCs. What the heck happened to this thing, man? I'm going to hit my son in there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that was a collective band of MCs that, you know, in order to get into the Juice Crew, you had to be nice. You dig what I'm saying? You had to be nice with your lyrics. You had to, you had to have something. And so you didn't just join the Juice Crew. The Juice Crew picked you. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a dad too, so I know <laughs> that's a dad. Listen, and I ain't got no shame in my game <laughs> at all. Yeah, thanks, but yeah, but the yeah. Juice Crew came together. There was a Juice Crew before the Juice Crew, y'all know, and it was Sal Abatello, Curtis Blow, 
and all of them uptown guys, but that was before records. We were the record faction of the Juice Crew. We were the first, like, the first record makers of the Juice Crew. We were Mr. Magic's creation. Okay, okay. No, I'm not unlocking the door because you're going to get in here causing havoc. No. <laughs> I'm coming here with your mess. I'm going to put you out. That's why I came in here. As a matter of fact, y'all take the truck and I'm going to get out. Go ahead, brother. No, no words. So I chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. It's okay. <laughs> I get it. So as far as the, as far as the group, who 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 were some of the names that was introduced to you who don't know? Say that again. Who were some of the names that were introduced to you that, that people may, may or may not know in the record faction? Of the there was a lot of people that came through cold chilling. And they weren't actually Juice Crew. So the Juice Crew basically was Kane, Shantae, Bismarcky, TJ Swan, Coogee Rap, Craig G, uh, 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 Percy, uh, what you call him? The, uh, the, the intelligent hoodlum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's people that what? Ace got a name for being with the Juice Crew because he was on a symphony. Mm-hmm. But Ace was another one of them that came through that was affiliated with Cold Chilling, but wasn't, you know, and he re he's even said it, but he's part of us, but it, just like IU and the rest of them, they but they wasn't, yeah. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and anybody that comes after Biz Marquis, I don't consider original Juice Crew. They okay. couldn't tell you the story of how the Juice Crew that me and Shantae and Biz and us formed they're not original juice crews. Kane ain't original to me. He's down with it, but he ain't one of the originals. If you got the juice crew story from Kane, it would have to come from his time joining the juice crew on. You mm. dig what I'm saying? I got you. If you wanted to get uh certain other stories, Craig was down from the beginning. Craig was with us when we was riding limos that was too short, and we had to sit across each other's legs. You know what I'm saying? There's stories of the Juice Crew that certain members can't tell you. Like that book they got out. I'm like, what the hell? They say this is a Juice Crew cold chilling book. Some of the stories in the thing is like, y'all don't have the original. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got to start from the beginning and work that way. I, I thought of that. What the heck is that? Man, these kids be doing that too much, man. Move. What the hell? Elijah! Get out, my car. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. I don't care. So what? Move. I don't care. Move. Trying to pay bills here, Shark. That's how it works around here, so. You want to call CPS on me? Be my guest. Then that would be ridiculous. You know, parent uh, and Let me tell you something. Because CPS will come to my house and I'll tell them, check it out. I'm going to beat my kids before the co police beat them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> millennials dope, got this new thing where, oh, you a kid shouldn't have to be. Yeah. When you tell, let me tell you something. These kids are a, a danger to their self right now. All of these new millennial kids, because back in the days when your mother told you stop, no, you stopped immediately, right? Absolutely. I tell my son, don't go over there. It could be a, a vicious dog coming at us, getting ready to kill us or something. And I tell him, no, come here. He's going to run in the direction of the dog because these kids have no discipline. Right. What did they say? Spare the rods? No, and then a father like me come along that's going to pop their ass. And people want to say, oh, why? Because the little nigga don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's keeping it in a buck if I ever heard that book. I try to tell you real loud. <laughs> Look, and that's all you get on my Instagram every day. But also you see this side of me. But when you see my Instagram, you also see that I'm a caring, loving father, spoil the hell out of my children. You dig what I'm saying? Sure. And so this all comes along with it. Why should they have all the quads? And my son, three years old, he got a real quad in there. Why should they have all of this and not listen? Yeah. 
Well, what it's like what they say, you know, if you love something, you want to protect it. And if if you if you don't I can't act like you care, then how can you say you love something? You know what I mean? Of course you go on you be wanting to protect and you don't want to do that. So but I see do. their mother is a different breed than I am. She thinks it's okay for oh, they're cute when they say no. I'm telling her one day you might be walking up the street and it's a stalker following you. And you gotta tell your kid, come on now. And you ain't got to keep explaining to them, bring her here. You dig what I'm saying? You should be able to, uh, because that one split second that your kid doesn't listen to you in an instant could be their life or yours. Yep. That's yeah. as simple as that. And these kids just have no fucking, no fucking bearings. Well, it's, it's no, no. Tired of the fucking right. government and the state getting in my house. Nigga, I will whoop their ass. And it's not a motherfucking thing. You can corporally punish your child. So don't come to me with that. I kicked them CPS people out my house. just for the, But this is real life. We're going to get back to the music in a minute. Yeah, but this is the real life shit that you see every day on the Instagram when I, you know what I'm saying? I give life lessons. Some of these kids, they'll, they'll check your child. But somebody else do, like the police. And and that's that's Brick City right there. That's that's Brick City right there. Like flat out, like you said, you know. So I, I mean, I come from that environment myself, so I totally understand that real life. But that's uh, we going. Let's go. Let's get back yeah. to the music. But you yeah, know, to it. like I say, lots of lots of times you get you get interviews and people don't like. They like to be politically correct, and they just show you something that they want you to see. Well, you've seen all of me. Yeah, but that's everything why you, that I got going on at this point in time in this situation. There's nothing going to be hidden about me. Period. But well, well, that's why that's why you 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 get the respect you get because you 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 directed you commanded you know what I mean. And it's not not like out you hey you need to respect me. It's just like like you say how you move real recognize real and that's that you know what I mean. Uh, so. Anybody that don't. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out my sister. My sister says she's still at the still at the bridge. And uh, so do I. So let's talk about the bridge. How did that come about, man? Because that is obviously a classic. Period. It's it's quintessential to the culture. So let's talk about that. How did that come about, man? How it came about was we came off a tour. Don't come over here with me with that. Check him yourself. You the bigger sister. We we came off a tour, right? And they had a a, a show that was going on in Queensbridge Park. And so Molly said, let's make a jam about Queensbridge. So I wrote down names. I did that song off, off, off my head. Excuse me. I wrote down names. Jappy Jap, Cousin Proof, blah, 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 blah. We played it in the park that day. And it went crazy. Right? That tape, that, that bridge song was a record in Queensbridge that everybody had on their cassette for two years before the world ever heard it. Because we sitting around thinking, well, who wants to hear about our neighborhood? Actually, Queensbridge was the first record that rep the neighborhood instead of a borough. See, people would represent, I'm from the Bronx, I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from Queens. No, I'm from Queensbridge. It was the first hood representing record. Where's Elijah? Thank you. The first hood repping record that was ever done. Yeah. That's it's it, and it's it's classic. It, like I said, it's classic this day. As a matter of fact, I got it on uh, uh, uh you know, uh, uh, you know, the vinyl. I got it on CD. I got it on every version of it. I, I like to collect a lot of the other the, the the classic stuff. Uh, and, and again, it just spoke to me. Like it's it's funny because like I said, my family from the tri-state, but I, I was born and raised in DC. So uh, a lot of who I am musically and sonically is about boom bap and and, and studying. Go go. You said, go go. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but you know, and, and I was on the circuit too. I played on the circuit. Look, too. I used to do shows with EU and them. Does I used to do shows with EU and them. Not surprising whatsoever. <laughs> That's, it's, it's definitely like I said. It's hey, you taking my kids with you? All right, because I'm on an interview. My niece coming to save me right now. I'll see you later. All right. Now we'll goodbye. Gonna... See y'all later. Which which uh, which which one uh which single resonates with you more, the bridge or the symphony? I wasn't on the symphony, I, and I get just asked just as much why I wasn't on the symphony as you know, you know. But, but all my songs personally, 
they all have a different a different meaning and a different point in my life and what, what I was going through at that point. Yeah, so yeah, people exactly. can't ask me what's a different oh what song do I like better? Or I can't. Left me lonely is something that happened to me. Jane stopped this crazy thing. Everybody around me was doing motherfucking crack, including myself. You know what I'm saying? But see the difference with the records we made back then. I might have just been in the studio and just sniffed the eight ball straight to the head. Hmm. But I'm not going to get on the song and say, sniff as much cocaine as possible. Right. You know what I'm saying? Smoke as many woo blunts. But nowadays, the music, it refers to go ahead and do lean and go ahead and do that. But, you know, like I said, I'm not ashamed of anything that I did. Shit, come on now. Let's be real. If you did it, you did it. Own up to it. You own it. And I own it. Right. But the music we made sent a whole different message to the youth. Even if don't be like me, forget what I'm doing. Don't be like me and don't do this and don't do that. And that's the message we bring. Oh, I, I, we were like the griots back then. Mm. We changed. We were the ones to change the culture. And then the industry got a hold of it. And turned it back to ratchetness because you had the Chuck D's and you had the full righteous teachers and you had the ex. Yeah, yeah. That time, that time was definitely a, a, a good time. It was a golden era, man. Like so many stories. It's about the stories, man. There you go. Okay, and you had the X clans and things like this, those people that were pumping positive positive messages, where the, the the news media outlets, the magazines, and all of that was ignoring the plight that was going on in the ghetto. Remember back in the days when Harlem was just tore down and nobody yeah. paid attention to it. Yeah. Well, we were the ones that came along and bring that message to the world. Look at how we're living. In the projects and they couldn't do anything about it because we were independent labels we did what we wanted to do and then they got a hold of it now every message in hip-hop is one of ratchetness i'm not gonna say everyone because there are those that are still true to the form art form that we have created and will make positive music but it's being hidden and it's being circumvented and, and, and pushed to the side by the powers that be to control things because the music is the way of the change. Right. We changed a lot of things with the music that we made back then. And they saw that it was a powerful thing and they took it over. And so before you see me make another hip hop song or, or make another rich mogul richer than he really is, I'd rather quit. I'm not doing any shows. Y'all don't pay old school artists enough money. Y'all act like y'all give us a thousand dollars. We got to sing every song that we did. But let one of these little young mumble rappers go do a show. You can't even understand their words and they getting enough money to be like this. Yeah. But y'all want to pay us a stack? Sorry. That's real though. That's real though. Definitely speaking to a culture. He's speaking, speaking to a time where where, where things are kind of in disarray. Y'all got automatic monitoring. <laughs> Y'all got automatic monitoring because as soon as I put up the finger, it said, whoop, you can't show that. <laughs> Cancel culture. But that's just how I feel about the music nowadays. It's been taken over and, you know, you got to look at it like this. When I started, there was 25 of us. The whole hip hop game could fit in one room. Now, everybody's hip hop. They have taken the value out of it. Because now, let's say you got one diamond, it's worth $30 million. But if you got 30 million diamonds, this is only worth, what do they say? 0. 0. 0. 0.00019 of a penny. That's what they're paying you for streams. <laughs> You need 1,500 streams to classify as one record sale, right. okay? When we were doing it, we could sell 1,500 CDs out of our trunk, physical copies at $5.99 a pop. Right. But now you're selling your music through all these, in, these, what you call it, people are subscribing 
to Spotify, $29.99 a month. They put your music on Spotify, people are streaming it, and they're paying you less than a penny. <laughs> Why would I want to deal with this game, yo? Why? Why? Tell me. I got a party bus sitting right there that I built. The truck that I'm sitting in, I got a long pressure mold, pressure washer business. I'm getting out. I'm doing some real estate in a minute. I'm just getting out. And to anybody that gets that money in the hip-hop game, here is a word to the wise. Get it and get out. There's no longevity in it. Now you want me to prove it to you? Because I'm not just going to splat something off that I can't prove. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Every old school hip hop artist in the business, Grandmaster Flash, all of them, they still doing shows at 60 and 70. I know at least Fla Flash and them niggas got to be 70. I'm 56. Okay? Mm -hmm. They still out here doing shows just to pay the rent and the bills that we've accumulated. But Barbara Streisand, Elton John, Billy Joel, and numerous others have ranches. And they're feeding horses in their retirement. They got horses and horse ranches and houses with guest houses. Name one hip hop person that didn't become a mogul. And I'm not talking about the Rick Rosses that got food chains, uh, Puffies that got Chirox, Ice T that got movies, LL that got. Ra I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the average old school hip hop artist. Right. No one. That's real. None of us have none of these things. You dig what I'm saying? So if you think that hip hop is going to save you, uh uh, the money you making right now, you better pay your taxes because in a minute you ain't going to be able to pay, afford to pay the government all that money that you was, you know, just blowing and they're going to come get it. Y'all remember, there's a few people out here y'all know that had $2 million tax bills. Imagine having a $2 million tax bill and your heyday is over. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't even quantify that, bro. <laughs> that does not compute <laughs> my, my, my register. <laughs> $2 million. Woo. All right. So, see, and this is the kind of interview you get when you get with Shan. We, uh, we talk about music, but we also talk about how music puts no grease on his hand. And... <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> thanks, 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 Shan. Thanks, man. Listen, I want I want to also talk about uh, you know something that's another cornerstone of the hip hop uh, industry, but I don't I don't necessarily want to uh, dabble in it too long. But I got to talk about it, and that's uh, let's you know, go. What's beef? And you know you know there, Nas, Jay Z, Biggie, Tupac, like you know there's there's beefs, right? Who's the better MC? Who's the better so forth and so on? Or for whatever reasons, there's stuff that's outside of that. Now I'm sure you had to had questions asked, uh, and I and I gotta ask like, what's what the 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 beef with you and and, and KRS? Like, what 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 was? That wasn't beef. That was the hip hop game. That was the hip hop game. See, as far as that's concerned, that's the way the hip hop game started out. You had the cool mo D's against the busy bees, and it was a battle for best MC. Hmm. That wasn't beef. That's part of the hip hop game and in this culture. You want to know what beef is? Beef, see, they, they got this, see, they make up new things with these younger generations. Like, they think pimping means spending the money. Pimping means keep it in your pocket, stupid. Paper <laughs> in my pocket, get it? Right. Tricking if you got it. Yes, it is. All right? <laughs> so, matter of fact, let's go back, because I just lost my chain of thought. <laughs> Nah, it's no worries. Now, nah, listen, you dropped the hell of a nugget right there, so I totally understand how it's just like, you know what I mean? But, yeah. It just took me somewhere else right quick. Let's go. Yeah, but it's, it, again, talk about the beef, right? Talk about you and the king. Oh, beef, right. beef, right. Real beef is when, now, see, we can't put street and the record industry together because they don't mix. Real beef is when you got to move your mama out of her fucking house. You dig what I'm saying? Because niggas is trying to come kill you. All right? These rap young cats, why they shooting each other nowadays is because they can't take they can't take having their, their, their feelings hurt. You're emotional. You're like women. Y'all are like women. If somebody says something about you, you're ready to go kill them. That wasn't what this rap game was about. You dig what I'm saying? So when you say, what's beef? Beef 
is when you got to move your mom and your kids out of the place where you reside your head at every night right. on some street shit. We don't have beef in the rap game. You have propaganda and set up for my niggas next album. That's what you got. That part. That part. Drake is going to be for Meat Mill because, ooh, what? Oh, you was hitting Nikki. So what? So what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on now. <laughs> oh, when I see you, we going to scrap. Ain't no man check no another man about no chick, yo. That to me is B stuff. You see what I'm saying? Right. You don't check no next man about no sex, yo. You check the chick. <laughs> so these niggas be doing Bitch nigga shit in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it, but it ain't. Look, and, and look, and if they consider themselves real folk, damn, the, what the nigga said was a thousand percent true. You don't check no nigga over no. Come on, man. It's a thousand percent real. That's, that's straight about, man. Real life. Let's uh, go on to this. Let's talk about Informer. Because most people don't yes, know sir. That, 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 that you was behind that. There's a lot of people. Most don't people know. don't know that at the time I was doing informal, I was the brokest that a man could ever be. The brokest. I was kicked off of Warner Brothers for, for, for calling Benny Medina a bundle of sticks. I was in the worst frame of my life. And I ran across Snow. Snow used to steal food to feed my family. Now think of this. He's from Canada. He's on parole already in another another country. He come to America, meet me, and like, yo, Snow, we could make this record. We could do this. We saved each other. He was stealing food, feeding my family, and I have no problem saying that, y'all. I keep it 1,000. Yeah. Snow, my Irish brother, I love him with all my heart. Nobody can't say nothing about him. One hit wonder, whatever. We one hit two, three, four, five hit wonders, okay? Now, that informer, I met uh, that actually came about because of my weed habit. I was going to the weed spot. And, uh, and and his DJ ran up on me and said, yo, I got a white boy that could do reggae. I said, yeah, right. Two weeks later, Snow came down there. And from the minute he said, in farmer, you know, said, I snow me, I'm going to I like, get boom, boom, down. See, some of y'all even didn't even know he said that. I just cleared it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that thing took off. Now, imagine this. Tonight, we finished the album. 11 o'clock tonight, tomorrow morning, he has to get on a plane to go serve a year in jail. Snow went to jail on a bus. And when he left, he left in a stretch limo longer than he thought he possibly would ever ride in his life. And from that point, we've been doing good. 2019, Daddy Yankee made a remake of Informa called Kong Kalma. Get a Pufali Illuminaya. Big shout to you, Daddy Yankee, because I'm going to tell you what. Motherfucking Daddy Yankee fed my kids again. He didn't have to go steal for it, but he took a song that he didn't even have to bother with. He could have used somebody else's song. Right. But he used Informa. It went 41 times plus. I don't even know what it's at right now. Two billion views on YouTube. I own my publishing. And so Daddy Yankee has put money in my pocket and has fed my kids. Playing skills. Appreciate y'all, brothers. Appreciate y'all. You dig what I'm saying? Well, we was getting money on the form anyway, but they could have did any other song. Well, 41 times platinum in the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. And please, just like this, but I keep mine on credit cards. <laughs> Indeed. That's Indeed. why you look at me and you see a man so eager and so stern on it. I quit hip hop. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Right. You dig what I'm saying? I've did enough in my life to set me up to where at 56 I don't have to do the same thing. And that's what you should strive for. A lot of people out here, we we chase the wrong thing. I, if I was looking for, I'm happy as hell. Why? Because I, does, I don't look past my family to make me happy. 
I'm not looking forward to a big house. I'm happy to what I have now. Because if I keep my mind focused on something that I don't have right now, I'm missing what I have right now. Right. That's Dig what I'm saying? Totally. So I live happy every day just waking up and being happy with what I have now. It could be a lot worse. And what people don't understand is this. Lots of times when you tell people your problems, you let's say your problems is a pair of shoes, right? Oh, my shoes, is, oh, my shoe, my it hurts. And then you look over and you see the person that you was telling about your shoes doesn't have any legs. So now how important are your shoes? Which means that the problems that you think you have are not as dire as you think. There's somebody more fucked up than you are. Your situation is what it is. Live with it and prosper. Don't look at it. If you look at your situation and you want to bring negativity on it, that's all you keep doing. You're not looking for the solution. The solution takes one second to find. But you can find a million excuses to, to say why you ain't going to fix it. I ain't going to do it because of this. I ain't going to do it because of that. I ain't going to do it because of that. Right? That's four or five of them. But there's only one. I'm going to do it. Right. And that's what stops people each and every freaking day. And that's the appropriate mindset to have. Like, like you said, but that's what separates the men from the boys, as they say, right? Like, you know, ain't, ain't everybody born with, with capes on. So a lot of people don't understand what it's like to be that, you know? But this is what I do with my Instagram each and every day. A lesson, a life's lesson that I had, I pass it on. You dig what I'm saying? So y'all go check out MC Shan 1. You're going to see me being a father. You're going to see me taking trips with my kids doing, you know what I'm saying? And usually you don't see celebrities, so-called celebrities, doing the things that I do. I do things to show, yo, just because you're a black man, that don't mean you can't take care of your kids and it don't take much. Kids don't ask for much. All of that that you want to buy them, that's personal to you. That makes you feel good. I could give my son this plastic bottle right here. He'll be happy with this plastic bottle <laughs> and will play with it for hours on end. Cost me nothing, right? That's real. But me, I want to go get him this. I want to go get him that. That's my personal thing. Kids don't require much. So you thinking, oh, I, got, I can't be around my kid and less and less and less. No, go be a father to your child, Mr. Black Man. So what the baby mama want to call you broke? Get a piece of tape and fix it. Right. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> it's a lot of gems that you spent, brother. And, and I, like, I respect it because to me, I, like, I, I don't try to be anything else other than real. So, I mean, everything you're saying. Hold like, up. Yeah. We breaking up. We breaking up. You sound like a robot real quick. How about now? You with me now? You hear me? Check. Uh, I hear you still oh. robot, but it's okay. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we'll, that'll clear up a little bit. Uh, I want to get to uh, current because you mentioned uh, your Instagram page. What other current MC products? Shan? MC Shan with a number one. MC Shan with a one at the end, not spelled out. <laughs> so, with that being said, let me ask: Who or what is Shizzle with the Whistle? That's me, Shizzle with a Whistle. <laughs> Shizzle with a Whistle. You know what I'm saying? Like I say. I stay with a whistle. People might say, Shan, you a drunk. No, I'm enjoying my life, right? And I drink whistle, right? Some people, I can't drink hard liquor. If I drink hard liquor, it's out of here. Henry, e and J like them, oh, no. One glass of that, I'm through. This is 6% or 12% alcohol, right? right? So instead of me being drunk, I stay on 12% all day long. <laughs> That's that's bad. That's clock management if I ever see it. <laughs> Look, right. I'm not encouraging anybody to drink. It's just because I don't have to wake up and answer to anybody. So I do what I do and I'm not encouraging you. But I can get up at nine o'clock in the morning and drink a whistle. Why? Because I run my own destiny and I made sure that that's what I was going to do. And that's and that is that's the end game. Everybody should try to be that's, that 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 mindset. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you love to do. You know what I mean? And it is what it is. You know? Uh, transition. Could Never you... judge anyone else. I, I, I usually take the position of 
never judge anyone else because it's not right. You just got to watch. How are you going to judge somebody else and everything in your backyard ain't clear? Which more people I don't judge people. Whatever you do is how you do it. And if you can do it responsibly, then but once you start neglecting the kids and stuff like that, that's when I got a problem with it, show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't weird. neglect the children. You can't neglect the household. You can't neglect none of that. Enjoy your life. Do what you do. You can do all the fentanyl and all of whatever you want to do. Nobody can control you. Okay? But once you start letting that life interfere with your important priorities, then you have slipped and you get no respect. Period. Drink all the wines. Do whatever you want to do all day. Pot can't call the kettle black. Okay? I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And I'm not just saying that for brass tax. I'm saying the real. I, I, that's on the same way. So I totally understand where you come from with that. Uh, I wanted to ask you this question. Could you describe the significance of Shan's final thoughts and fun time with the kids, which I noticed were, were, were uh, uh, topics that you use in your Instagram as well? What, what, how, what is the significance of these? The, is there a significance or is this just, uh, you know, just, you know, Shan's thoughts, put, you know, put it, put out there on, on, on social media? They're my thoughts. They're my life. They're what I go through. You dig what I'm saying? I don't just put up a, a put up a, a thing for nothing. Just, for, you know, it's got a reason or a rhyme to it. Today, I might say something that works for you. Tomorrow, I might say something that doesn't work for you, doesn't fit to your life. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So don't judge me on what I said today, because what I might say tomorrow might bring a spark to you. And that's why I try and use my platform to educate. I show people to fix stuff. You know, next, I got a, 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 my, my radiator in my Mercedes blue, right? People will say, oh, girl, you ain't going to do it. Oh, yes, we are. It's <laughs> Shan and his merry band of fix-it misfits, right? <laughs> We're not qualified to do any of the jobs that you're going to see us do. But we try it anyway. And that's the thing that I try. You, you'll you see me fixing stuff on my, on, my, on my Instagram. You'll see me rip a whole engine apart. I'm not a qualified technician, but I'll rip it apart anyway because I'm gaining knowledge. Even if I mess up, guess the knowledge that I gained getting as far. Now I done got this far, I refer to Google. Google got everything. <laughs> yeah, in YouTube. And yeah. so you know how you have these you have these reality shows that says, do not try this at home, folks. Our main theory is please try this at home, folks. <laughs> Learn something. I built a, a party bus. I bought a bus, right? It's sitting right there. Let me see if I can show you. It's sitting right there. I built that bus with my own hands. I don't have the keys, but it's built. I had seats in it like it was an invalid bus. It was to take hospital patients. I ripped that bus apart. And why? Because at the time when I was making the bus, I was going to people, yo, I need this done. I need this done. And it was during Corona. And they thought that they was going to get all their Corona budget money back on me. What? And so I say, you know what? They ain't smarter than me. I took all the knowledge that I learned and the same knowledge that you have. Five plus five equal what? Damn. Thank you. So if you got something 10 inches, you learned this in school. So basically all the stuff that I learned in science and math and angles and all, I learned in fifth grade. Right. I just applied it to what the fuck I had to do, which we lose that as we get older. We don't understand that. Oh, they taught us how to measure in second grade. Five inches plus two inches, so I used the ruler. I got a saw. I did this. I did that. Oh, plus and negative. Black and red wire. Okay. Boom. So yeah. I took all the knowledge and I applied it. And what do I got? You can go on my Instagram and see the bus all done up. Yeah. I did it myself right here in my yard. No help. Well, I did get help because when I got when it came time to cut the wood straight, I had some 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 partners across the street that could cut wood better than me. 
Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you still got to do it yourself. You might, you manage the project. You know what I mean? All right, but see, here's what it is. But the whole thing is to inspire people to dig deeper in yourself. You don't know what you can do unless you try it. And if you fail, it's actually not a fail. You gain some insight into what you've done. I'm not a car stereo enthusiast. I don't know how to put in windows, but I just bought this this this, this pickup truck. I'm officially country now. I got a pickup truck. <laughs> uh, look, I'm not a. I'm about to rip the radio out of here. Amazon got me on that one day joint. I order so much from Amazon. I'm like, yo, you order this now. We're gonna get it to you today. So I'm gonna rip this radio out tonight. I'm not a radio technician, but I know plus and minus, left speaker, right speaker, up, front, back. Simple things I've learned in first, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. <laughs> right. you. But and it, I it, try it, and teach this and inspire this on top of. Be a father to your child, Mr. Black Man. <laughs> Much respect, man. I, I, I love your I love your whole energy, your style, everything, man. Cause like you said, it's just it's, it's no front street with you, man. You street, you you live and direct, right? And live in people's living rooms with it. And I love it. You know what I mean? And I um, appreciate you for having me on the show. No, no <laughs> I appreciate doubt. it. No doubt. Listen, I I, I, I want to cut some of these things down because I had a you know a nice long little schedule, but for time, I want to cut some things down, but I do have two hot topic questions that I want to run by you. All right, so we're going to keep put my glasses on. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, go, just, and look, yeah, yeah. there's going to be people to say, I'm getting my teeth done another month. I'm tired of my, uh, when they fall out, I'm going to get them done because it's going to be people say, yo, what's up with that? <laughs> I ain't no shame in my game on that either. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. You know what I mean? Now, what was that that I just seen? The hot topic, what it say? Hot topics. So hot topics are random questions uh, that, that I ask you. For the viewers that get to know who you are through these random questions that I ask. Again, usually it's a little bit longer, but I, I wanted to truncate it for time. Uh, but I'm going to give you... Because I'm, I'm long-winded. Let's go. No, 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 no. It's not long-winded at all. I, shoot, I had you on here for two hours, but it's just a matter of respecting your time, man. Like, that's that's real. Um, what's uh, The first question is three things you didn't know. What's three things that the world does not know about MC Shan or three things that people keep getting wrong that they need to put some respect on your name about? That what they don't know is that I I, I think we hit them out the box. I do ghost hunting. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> Never knew. Never knew. <laughs> okay. So that. All right. Well, they know I cook every day. Well, basically, there's things you can't ask that because everything about MC Shan is on his Instagram every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so there's true. really nothing that you can ask that you can't know about Shan. Oh, you know what? He cook, He put some rib slabs on the grill today. Shan don't need a reason to barbecue. He barbecues every day. Let's go to the next one. All those are answered every day. <laughs> uh, top five MCs, man. And I got to ask you because you was here from the start. I don't answer that question either. And okay. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because we can't say nothing about that. And we always get that in our culture. That's, that just goes back to us pulling each other down again. And no other culture does that but ours. That's Why good. does it have to be the top five MCs of all time? How come we can't all be great in our own right in the reign that we did? You'll never okay. see them fucking Chuck and Willie Nelson for Barbara Streisand and Elton John. They put them <laughs> all on the same pedestal. They don't tell them, oh, which one is better, this one, that one. We the only culture to do that, and I'm not about to divide us. And in the end of the day, you can only do that when they shut the book on hip hop and everything is closed down. They have brushed off the counter and we're right. pulling up the tally papers. Then we can say that's the end of the game. Now let's go back and see what was what. OK, well, let me rephrase. People the question. still think that I ain't got no credibility and I still will say. Chris could never touch me lyrically. Yes, he's got the stage show performance, all that. But lyrically, bingo. And I say it in public. I did, and, and I would expect less. I mean, I, but I think everybody in hip-hop would do that. And true true hip-hop people would say that too, though. 
You know what I mean? So I, I wouldn't even hold that against you, brother. Like real life. Um. Okay. Nah, but like I say, I'm not even going. Me and Chris, we have our own lane. See, Chris can kill me at a show. I can't. Not a lot of people can't kill Chris at a show, but I'll give him a run for his money, metaphorically. See. So Chris is good in his lane. I'm good in mine, and you can't fit us in the same box. So y'all say, Chris, you're in battle. We're going to both be winners in our mm -hmm. own right. <laughs> Let me ask you Why this, put man. us against each other all the time? That was the fun in the game. It, it's so, I'm glad you say that because that then then this, let's change this to what that versus do. You If, if they called you and called Chris and said, hey, man, we won't get you with KRS-1 on, 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 on the, uh, the versus. You'd be re be there live and direct, and, and and how do you think? Like obviously, you I'm sure you feel like you you, you crush more so on the soul. But would you? I guess the question is, would you answer that call if versus came calling? Now you want to ask me if I would answer that call? Ask Chris, did he answer that call for six <laughs> months? Hold it for six months. You could go back on my Instagram and see I've been calling Chris out for the past six months to the point I had to stop. Because it got so redundant that I'm like, yo, let's do versus, homie. And he dipping me that it seems like Shan's just trying to push for something. But enough people, enough interviewers heard me. Yo, Shan want to do you on versus, Chris. What's up? What's up? That he can't say nothing to some of these interviewers because they'll say, yo, he been calling you out for six months, homie. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to answer now? He was direct and live on his Instagram, like, yo, what's up, homie? Let's get it. So would I do a versus? What versus won't do is get me and Chris on there. You want to know why? Because now, instead of it being a, it's now corporate. So they're paying people to get on versus. Mm -hmm. They don't want to see me and Chris with $200,000 out of the blue sky. They want us to look like we're idiots. And oh, we're not worth the two hundred thousand that they paying these new new cats to get on there. You dig what I'm saying? Right. They don't want to see us with no money. They paying people now. They saying, "Well, fuck that battle. That shit is so old. So what?" They're finding an excuse not to get us bread. Right. That's how this game works, yo. But I ain't worried about it. I got Daddy Yankee money, shorty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a winner if I ever heard. And it. with that Daddy Yankee money. You just give it another six months, I'm going to have a whole new set of motherfucking jibbers, boy. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Well, I appreciate you with the hot topics. I got a couple more questions, and then I'm going to let you go. Um, I do want to ask you, uh, Black to the Future, because you already kind of alluded to this earlier, but could you share your thoughts and the differences between the Black youth of today and the Black youth of yesterday yet? It's pertaining to specifically the hip hop industry. The what? The black what? The black youth of today and the black youth of yesterday in the hip hop game. Like, do you all right? The black youth of yesterday. See, when when we the black youth of my era, yeah, we had fathers in our lives. Although we may not have had fathers in our lives, we had uncles and cousins that kept us. You know what I'm saying? boyish let's just put it that way if you did the wrong thing you got punched in your chest you get what i'm saying you did the wrong thing you got slapped in your head it wasn't none of this crying stuff you wasn't allowed to wear pink you wasn't allowed to wear girl clothing and things like that and so the generation kind of got twisted and with the new millennium be who you want to be do what you want to do there's no haterism here with me but it's just that i feel that you should give somebody a chance to get of a certain age and a certain mind frame before we start pumping all this new stuff that these young rappers and artists are pumping into our children's heads. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Give them the industry, people of powers that be. It ain't even them because they're going to listen to the man with the check. Please allow our children to grow. And don't put alternative methods and means in, our, in their head at young ages when they cannot comprehend and understand what that means because once you give it up you can't get it back right. you will never be able to call yourself manly ever again you can pump your chest up all you want shawty 
Pump your chest up all you want to the world, but you know. That's all I'm saying. That's real. That's real. But be who you going to be. That's not me. That's not me being phobic or nothing like that. That's just me saying, yo, that once upon a time was was a there was a code. You dig what I'm saying? There was a code to being a man and what you should portray yourself as. And that's the difference between the youth of my day and the youth of nowadays. That millennial, everything is accepted. They, they, let me tell you something. And hope I'm not being too on the other side. They done went so far to take God's word and retract it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to go any further with it. I'm not a believer in Christ in the church. I believe in the universe. So I'm not being on no spiritual Christ. In the, but I'm just saying they have taken the word of the almighty master and have made it okay to do the certain things that we're seeing our youth being bombarded with daily. Right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the difference right. between. <laughs> I would you. I would you. Oh. Uh, for you specifically, and I know you you understand this very, very well, how important is social media to your brand of success? And this is geared towards the, the, the young people, the, the, the people that are aspiring uh, to achieve the level of success that you've achieved. All right. Your social media is all everything nowadays. And if and, and young kids, younger, younger artists come to me, right? Oh, Shan, how the way of doing business nowadays that I used to do. Is no longer in existence. Why are you going to come ask me? I, I'll be telling them, get out my face. I need to ask you how to work the internet and get this done. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? Right. I need to ask you. There's a whole different way of the ball game that things is going right now. And the youth have it in their hand with this social media. This is how they where they, they make a, a, a little clip on TikTok of them going, whoo, ha, whoo, ha, whoo. Next thing you know, the world is going, whoo, ha, whoo, ha. This is the way to go nowadays. But like I said, at my age, my people got to work. You right. dig what I'm saying? They ain't got time to be watching me do ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And the things that I put on my Instagram, lots of times just, you know, teach the youth. But then there's grown folks that don't have a concept of what the hell is going on in their life. Right. And so the things that I put, like you say, the topics and things like that, those be real to help others. And so what? It might look like Sham was messed up at that point. So what? My my mess up could be your savior. I'm willing to put it out there for you, just like that. I respect that, man. I respect that. As a as a as a recording artist myself, that's something I used to always say on the stage. It's like even if I fuck up, it'd be the best fuck up you ever seen in your life. And that was just my attitude. Thank you. you know what I mean? So I, I totally understand that mm -hmm. you know that 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 perspective, and I respect it so much. Uh, last serious question that I want to ask you. Then uh, I got two more questions that we out. I know you've been a voice as far Hopefully as hopefully uh, my nephew truck don't sound too loud. He coming through here with this big old monster. Look at <laughs> that's that's my country <laughs> ass nephew right there. <laughs> <laughs> so he I, made I me buy a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been a vo of, of uh, you know vocal about uh, you know uh, the, the state of, uh, of of the union and so forth and so on, especially like particularly uh, dictator Trump. Uh, black in America, what does that mean to you today, overall? <laughs> Same thing it meant all the time. It may it, mean, it means nothing. It means as far as I'm concerned, it's everything. But as far as the world is concerned, nobody respects us as being black in America. You got, you got, uh, uh, what you call them? Illegal, illegal immigrants mm -hmm. that'll call you the N word. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese, they look, Japanese were in internment camps back in the 40s when they had World War, what you call it? Mm -hmm. They'll call you the N word. Nobody respects black folk. Why? Because we don't respect ourselves. We don't put any dignity or respect on our own name. You dig what I'm saying? We'll right. call each other nigga all day, nigga, 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 nigga. Unless somebody else call you nigga, nigga, nigga. It's going to be a problem. You right. see what I'm saying? Make, let, let's, let's make a choice. Either it's bad and not acceptable at all, 
or don't you know what I'm saying? Don't you can't you can't because you say it every day and we degrade ourselves so much. It's like we can't. It's to the point where we can't see us as black people see the next man get up. We all think that we can do it by ourselves, not recognizing you can't do everything by yourself. I hear you. It's great to have that spirit. But a boss, a boss, a real boss recognizes that he can't do everything. All right. Yes, I could paint the truck, but guess what? I don't do tires. So I got to call a tire man in to do the tires because I don't do that. Right. Okay. And see, that's part of being a boss, knowing where your expertise ends and you have to have someone else do something. All right. Y'all think that, oh, you want to play Superman? Well, let me tell you one thing about Superman. Even Superman needed help. Why? Because the zipper was in the back. What you think he did? He turned to his girl. He said, yo, baby, could you zip me up, shawty? But you never see him do that. But Superman needed help. You understand? So don't think you throw that S on your chest. Superman! Homie, you still need somebody to zip the zip up, stupid. <laughs> Oh man, oh I, I man, I, I love some shit, some MC Shad, bro. <laughs> you keep it up. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So let me ask you this next question, uh, and this is the next to last question. Any advice for aspiring young people uh, that that are coming up in the game that really need to know the brass tacks? They need to know just just something that they can lock on to in order to get them through to, to possibly break through. All right, take it as a hobby. Don't take it as your career. While you're in school, doing law school or doctoring or whatever you're doing, if you want to make hip hop your hobby and you could bust off and get some bread, well, stay connected to that career. That's going to be a career. Instead of a job, a job and a career is two different things. Right. And now, if you're going to be in this music business, don't just get in it to have fun. Learn everything that you can. Learn what your manager is supposed to do. Learn, learn to read. Forget that. Read the contract with your lawyer. You're paying him to sit there. Read me everything. Let, let me know all that I can know. Don't just take their word for it. And your lawyer is your wolf against the rest of the world. You pay him, so he going to eat with you. Don't take nobody else's lawyer. Protect your own self. Now, remember, your lawyer is your wolf. He keeps everybody else from eating off you and, and, and giving you raw deals. So if you're going to get in this, the first thing you better do is say, I'm not signing a contract at the table of a diner or in somebody's kitchen. I'm going to have my lawyer. Don't be so eager. Give me the paperwork. I'm going to send it to my people and they'll get back to you. That is OG work right there. That's that's boss talk right there. For, for any of the other shit is bullshit. It's for Gazi. That's that's boss talk real life. All right, all right. Listen, um, I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. I thoroughly enjoy uh, mix, mixing it up with you, brother. I just want to ask one last question: How can people learn more about you? Again, plug that inst Instagram. Uh, if you got anything else, any other shout outs, any anything else you want to show shed light on to show love to, feel free to do it. Love. I want to shout out. To everybody that's going through things, it ain't as bad as you think. It gets better. It gets greater later. Don't even worry about it. It's just a stumbling block right now. It's nothing going. If you're still alive and you're breathing, you're going to achieve, okay? Anybody that's going through any health problems, take care of your health. You know what I'm saying? Your health is your wealth. Get good sleep. Do whatever you got to do. And... When you wake up in the morning, if you wake up with the attitude of, I'm so happy that I'm alive today, and anything else that comes after this is just a given, your day will go great each and every day. If you wake up and look at yourself in the mirror with a smile, instead of carrying yesterday's problems into today, you're going to start seeing your life change each and every day, ignoring the bull crap that you're used to, used to entertaining. You just leave it where it's at. Let it go and go ahead and do your thing. And that ain't got nothing to do with music. That's got to do with each and every day life, whether you get up and go to work. We already know we got pain in the ass coworkers. Don't let them, don't feed their demons that day. Go to, you know what's going to make them, make them more? <clears throat> that you got a smile today and they can't touch you. <laughs> and that anything part. you do, just keep a smile. That part. 
I, listen, like I said, I, I, I sincerely appreciate everything, that, 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 you know, uh, being able to share energy with you. I, I appreciate everything that you're saying, all of the knowledge, because you definitely spitting, brother. Um, and uh, any way I can be of service, a service or assistance, man, I appreciate you. Feel free to reach out to me. If you want me to repost anything, I'd be more than happy to repost to help, help uh, you know, spread, uh, you know, the, the Shan gospel and so forth and so on, man. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, brother. All right. So now that was my last whistle. You've seen me drinking my truck, so I'm getting ready to go get me a new stack of whistles. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So like like I said, I'm gonna let him go and get his, his, his last whistle. Uh shout out to BTP Media Group uh for, for helping to set this up. Shout out to MC Shan. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to this brother on Instagram. Follow MC Shan one. Like and subscribe to beat. Follow. We got we got you know dopeness on deck every day, all day. Uh and that's it, man. Everybody stay blessed, stay stay uh, happy, stay humble, and we about to be out. Peace out. Appreciate y'all. Larry. Peace. All right. I'm going to store. Bye. <laughs>